right in 2016 i created a tutorial that showed you how to make a saucy skirt it's basically a paneled skirt super simple so this is the pattern making process and then the constriction process you're going to want some basic pattern making tools like some kind of paper a tape measure or measuring tape a ruler of some sort pencil sewing machine fabric interfacing uh for the waistband and then or facing sorry and then we can crack on there's probably a few other things i'll mention them as we go through or i'll put them in the description below and let's get cracking this is a really great project because you could do, all you need are three measurements really you need the waist circumference you need the hips circumference and you need the length that you want there are other variable measurements that you can take as well but it's so 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 easy i'm going to show you how to do it let's roll your waist is basically it can be your natural waist or it can be the waist where you like things to sit so i'm wearing a pair of high-waisted trousers at the moment i don't know if i want a skirt to sit that high i think more like here so i'm going to take a measurement around that section and that's 119 then i'm going to take it at the widest part of my hips slash bum area and again you want your tape measure to be horizontal to the floor so parallel to the floor and that's 123 centimeters and then you kind of want the distance between the two so like did i do it about here on my belly bit didn't i and then to here 20 yeah that's kind of standard waist to hips and then your actual length so how long do i want it to be i want this to be a cute mini skirt maybe a pencil skirt so i'm going to take the measurement down to my knee and I get 60 centimeters. So those are my three measurements. I forgot to write them down. So I'm going to have to review this video, write them down and then come back to you. So because the light's fading, I'm actually gonna show you this pattern making process on my computer so I can screen record it and I don't have to worry about the harsh lighting. It's really simple. You just duplicate or replicate what I'm doing on paper, if that's what you're using. And then we can cut the fabric out and start sewing. Basically, my measurements are, let me just write them down so you can see them. So what we want to do is decide how many panels we're going to have in our skirt. I've decided I'm going to have six panels, three at the front, three at the back. And then it's a case of distributing them. For this purpose, I'm just going to evenly distribute them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add ease to each of these amounts. So if I add three centimeters ease to my waist, we get 122. And then if I'm dividing that into six panels, that's going to be 21 cm plus seam allowance. Okay. Then my hip, we're going to add another three centimeters for ease there. You can do the amount of ease that you prefer. I'm just adding a little bit of flexibility because at the time of the year it's Christmas and I can always take it in. So that's 126 centimeters. And then I want to divide that by six. So, oh, hang on. 122 divided by six. That's not quite right, is it? That's not 21, because that would be 21, because 20 plus, so that's actually 21 there. That means this is 20.3.3 recurring. We don't need to worry about the waist to hip measurement because that is just what it is. And then the length 60 is what it is. So the main measurements we need, the waist to hip, the waist to hip. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a line and center it. Okay, then you're going to want to take another line and we want it to be 20.3 centimeters. So that's 203 mils and we want it to be at that angle. And I'm going to put that here. I'm going to line up my center line. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that now because we don't need that. We're going to create a new line for the length, which is 60. So that's 600 mils. Oh, I should have turned it around. Never mind. And you want that to be in the middle of that line. And then we want another, the hip, 20 centimeters down. So we're going to make a line that is 200 mils, which we're going to remove after. So that's going to be our hip line, which we need a line for 21 centimeters going across. That's 210. And then that we want to intersect here so that it's this distance apart. Now we can get rid of that line. And again, we want all of these to be lined up at the center that looks to be the case and then that's it hang on is that our waist 21 so there's not an awful lot of difference between my waist and my hips because i've got a little bit of a chunky waist at the moment if your waist was smaller let's just set this to one side let's say that your waist was 110 okay you divide that by six it's going to give you 18 centimeters you can see then that there's a more of a curve between the panels my waist isn't as fine as that so now I'm just going to make these all line up again. So we've got our measurements. I'm going to group them together and then we're just connecting the lines. So from the hem, this is the hem here. So do I want it to be straight down the same amount or do I want it to flare out? Like there are all sorts of things you can play with. I actually just want it to be slightly narrower and I'm going to take this line 
I'm going to bring that down, but I'm going to take the length is 210. I'm going to change it. You can't see this because this is off my screen. I'm going to change it to, to 190. So it's taking two centimeters off. And then that should give me quite a fitted down to my knees. Now we just need to connect the hip, the waist to the hip to the hem. We have a very small difference as we know. To do that, I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm just going to tap on the anchor. At this point, I'm just going to make it curve slightly. Can you see that? It can curve it loads. I just want to curve it nicely. And then I'm going to continue that line to here. So you can see it's a very gentle, and this is actually curving inwards towards the hem. And then a sneaky trick in order to get that line duplicated, just to copy, paste. Can you see that's just shown up on the opposite side here? And then right click and you can go to transform, reflect, boom. And then you've got exactly the same line that you had on the opposite side. Ideally, you want to move those at the same time. So let's go back. We're going to group them together. Actually, if I click J, it will join them to make one line. And then this one, and that's my panel. You can then remove, if we ungroup them, you could remove that hip line. Um, I'm going to keep it because that's a good guide for my um, any pattern modifications. I know that that needs to be my widest point. And then you just want to add seam allowance. So you can either do that here on the computer. If you tap on the lines that you want, I think that's all of them. I'm going to click J to join them all to make one entire. And then I can offset the path by 10 mils, mitered, mitered limit four. And then we don't need that in, we get rid of that one. And then what we have is, this is still my hip line. This is still my straight grain line. This is my sewing line. This is my cutting line. So I now have a panel that I can cut six of. Okay, I'm going to print that and come back to you on the desk. It's exported and ready to print. And it's really important if you're doing this on the computer that you scale it to 100%. And we're not going to worry about the fact that information is missing on the edges because I've scaled this to 100%, which is set to print at A4. You could change it to borderless and those lines would show, but I don't have borderless printing on this computer on this printer so we're just going to do it as is and then i'll show you how that works a it's editing e um i just wanted to reiterate that you don't need to be doing this on a computer like i'm only showing you the process on the computer because i didn't have good lighting and you would have struggled to see what i was doing if i had made the pattern on the table with the harsh lighting there would have been too many shadows that kind of thing so you are free to do exactly the same process just do it on pen and paper on your work table that's perfectly fine okay you don't need a computer for this so the way that i have my pattern set up on my computer program is to actually print at is as is to scale which is why it's really important for marking it 100 percent scale and then you can just line up the pages assuming that your printer is printed accurately you can see here i've got a step which means that my alignment wasn't accurate so I'm just going to shift that. But basically, now I can just tape those together and that will work, which I'm going to do now. And I have actually printed mine on card. It's not cardstock because we don't get cardstock here in the UK, but it's 160 GSM paper. So it's thicker and heavier than regular paper. And that way I can reuse this as this will be like my basic panel block minus some modification. So I'm going to cut this out and then we can have a look at the fabric that I'm going to use. So the fabric I think that I want to make it from is this lovely kind of like cotton sateen. It's got a like slight shine to it. Can you see? And I thought it had a bit of stretch in, but actually on stretching it, it doesn't. For some reason, I thought it had a little bit of stretch. So I'm glad I didn't make this smaller as planned and added a bit of ease to it because it will need it. So I'm just going to check how much I've got here and then start cutting six panels if there's enough. Okay, it looks like I've got enough. One, two, three, just about. And then that does leave me enough at the bottom to do a, what's that thing called? A facing, waistband facing. So... With that in mind, we're going to cut it out. I'll do it without you because it's just going to be faster. We'll save time and then I'll come back to you. Just to note, because this is important to note in case I forget later, I've actually extended the hem by three centimeters. So I have one plus three, I have four centimeters hem allowance in total. And I just kind of graded out. I'll tidy that up after, but I just wanted to make sure I had enough for a proper hem so I can fold it under. That's two cut, I need to cut four more. So I have all six pieces, three lots of two, 
cut out. You can see there's very little shaping between the waist and the hip, and that is because I don't have that much shaping <laughs> difference. But I'm going to baste this together with my sewing machine because that will be faster and try it on. I'm going to have a zipper. Obviously, I can't have it in the center front or center back unless I do an exposed zipper. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at what my options are in terms of zippers. Then I'll decide the actual finishing. So I'll just leave probably the side seam open for now so I can put it on and test the fit. Okay, I'm just going to show you how I'm modifying the hem as well for the hem facing um, because I'll be doing a turned up hem it's just going to be easier so I've marked in a line four centimeters which is what I had allowed because I had the one centimeter plus the three I added on I'm going to turn that under at that point okay and then I'm just going to follow the existing line and you can see that we've got that little bit of shaping I'm going to do that for all the other pieces and then as I just said I'm going to baste it together so we can see what it looks like I'm on the final section. I'm starting it from 20 centimeters down, which is technically where my hip would start, and that's where I'd be putting the zipper in. So I'm just going to sew from here down to the hem, and then we can try it on. So in general, it's too big, obviously. I had added three centimeters ease at the waist and at the hip, and it is big by that amount, but that's fine because what that enables me to do is I can now make sure that my side seams are in exactly the place where I want them to be because quite often using this method, you will not have your side seams exactly where you want. They end up a bit displaced. So this enables me now to go in, I can put the side seams where I would like them to be. I actually want the hem to be further in as well. So I'm gonna pin that all, and then I'm gonna to come back to you and show you how it looks. Okay, so I've made these changes. I've pinned in, might need to take in a little bit more, but I've pinned in the side seam. I've pinned in this side seam further. I've also added in a little bit more darting shaping here on the back and I've marked a point where I want my slit opening to be. So this is how it's looking. And with a foot waistband on, it should give me room to have Christmas dinner, if I went this on Christmas. Once it's been hemmed, it will sit just above my knee. So it's kind of like a paneled pencil skirt. So now what I'm gonna do is just make those changes. I'm gonna make a note of them on my pattern, but then I'm going to basically sew this as is so that it's done then we need to do the waistband but i will show you the process so don't worry okay so the skirt is off you can see i've chalked in where those pins were i'm going to transfer that to the pattern as well as here i'm going to mark that so i know i also pinned in a little bit further the two back sections just because those could be a little bit more fitted i've got a roundish bum but i do have a back waist so that will just i'll ease those in i think all over i had sewn with just shy of a centimeter so i'm just going to make sure that i do sew the actual seams with a full centimeter and that will just give it that nice little bit of snug so i'm going to transfer the information to the existing pattern so i've got it for future reference and then i'm going to sew those changes and i'll come back to you Okay, so that's my left side opening. So this is gonna be the back and front. And then we need to make the modifications on the other piece. While I'm on the back section, I'm actually going to measure out the difference in those darts. So that's 0.7 times two is 1.4. And then for this one is 0.6. So 0.6 is 1.2. So that's a total of 2.6, we'll say 2.5 in total. So that's 1.25 I need to remove from this side and this side and 1.25 but half of that so 0.6 i'm just going to mark that in and i'm just going to note on there that those are the back panel darts so the front doesn't need that this is the front line this is the back line back line front line okay the last thing to do is the other side seam okay in order to not confuse myself i'm actually marking in the other side seam on the opposite edge of the panel and i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to use my tracing wheel and i'm just going to trace through these lines and then from here and then i can mark that in using my french curve again I do feel like that's supposed to be in a little, no, because if we, mm, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check, so it's 1.2, because we do want the panels to be consistent, okay, 1.5. There we go. So those are the changes. That's going to be the right. And then everything else will follow. This is the front. Only other thing I need to put in is the point where the slit will be. And I had put a pin somewhere. What we're going to do, and that would be the front line. I'll just mark that into place and I'll say this is the slit notch on the front opening seam. I've just trimmed away the excess. 
And I'm going to repeat that and then we'll sew it. Okay, so I've made those changes. You can see I haven't yet sewn the side seam where the zip goes, but if you take out that, it needs a waistband or facing. I've got my slit. I put it on the wrong side, actually. I might have to change it to this side because I feel like it should be this side. The additional shaping around that, I added in those dots. So it feels a lot nicer now. Uh, it's still not perfect That's because I've got a tummy. In an ideal world, my tummy would be flat, but oh, there are a few of us that have that now, I guess. So the next step is to put the zipper in. Well, first I need to decide. So first I need to decide, look, my hair's gone crazy. Whether I'm going to add a waistband or a waist facing. If I'm doing the waist facing, then I need to trace off the pattern pieces. Probably the skirt pieces itself, because I'm not sure that the pattern is as accurate as it could be for this version because i did change my seam allowances a little it might just be easier to do a waist band which i'll then interface and have a button at the top or a hook and eye closure either way i'll still put the invisible zipper in i've actually sewn the left side closed and left the right side open it's a problem when you're working inside out and rushing <laughs> but so far so good it's a nice festive color so i could even wear it on christmas day with some tights to keep my legs warm with maybe my sequin blazer I'm not sure but anyway i'm going to make a few minor tweaks and then i will show you what we're doing we are on the home straight the zipper is in invisible of course i did the shorter one i need to press it i've got a slight bubble here which i'm not happy about i'll press it and see if that solves it otherwise i might just have to redo it but i haven't included that in this video because i have a separate video that i will share on youtube so that it doesn't get tied up in this one and then if you don't know how to install a concealed zipper you can then go and watch that but i didn't want to fill this video out with something that you may already know it's quite shapeless because as i already said my tummy's quite round and there's not much difference between my waist and my hips so the next step is i'm going to so the way that i would normally do it is to sew up here for a hem facing turn it through but i want to actually turn this by 0.5 and 0.5 so that the frayage doesn't happen so we have a nice then neat finish and i will edge stitch down and then i will figure out this part after so i'm going to turn each of these sides under 0.5 and 0.5 so it's a double fold hem, but it's really fine. Then we will turn up the hem. And then the last task is to create a waistband for this. Today we are making the waistband for the skirt, but I've cut a strip that is as wide as my fabric and eight centimeters deep. And I've cut interfacing to match. So we're going to apply that interfacing now. So I'm just gonna apply the interfacing to the wrong side for my waistband, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so the waistband's on. Now I'm going to press the seam allowance of the skirt and the waistband upwards, fold the waistband down, and then that pre-pressed line, I will top stitch directly over. So we get a lovely clean finish. I'm gonna do that now. So I've drawn in that line so that it is a straight line from the zipper going it doesn't look that straight actually <laughs> and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to fold it like so i want to make sure that that line is similar to this line this fold line here because that's going to turn over and enclose everything and then i'm going to pop a pin and i'm going to sew from the folded edge down to this folded edge here can you see that i don't want to go into the seam allowance because this needs to turn through and enclose the space here and we're going to do the same thing for the other end but the other end because we've got an extension where we're going to put a buttonhole that is not as important i mean it is important of course but it's not going to be as particular in making sure it lines up with the zipper because we've got that overhang so this should all be pressed and then we're going to fold that back on itself and we just want to sew with a one centimeter seam allowance along that edge from a centimeter in because that all needs to be turned through as well to create that overlap okay okay we can now trim those edges i've actually already trimmed this and then the way that i like to turn it through is to press that open with my fingertips make a little kind of like a triangle corner and fold it or turn it and I'm going to get my handy screwdriver and I'm just going to push that corner out so we get a lovely, lovely corner finish. And then where we've already put in our folds, we are literally just going to stitch along all the way, all the way and get that lovely clean finish. So there you have it. A super simple panelled, well for me, a pencil skirt, but you could do it any way you wanted. You could have it as a mini skirt, you could do it as a maxi skirt. The fewer panels you have, the more dotting you're going to have to add in at the fitting stage. But if you do, like, you could do, like, 
the four panels no i did six panels you could do eight panels you could do 16 panels if you haven't already seen it i've got a tutorial on using a panel for a circle skirt like a paneled circle skirt i'll link it up here but you can like as long as you've got your waist your hip and your waist to hip measurement you can make it as long as you want but you can also from the hip down as long as you know you've got the circumference to go around your hips you could do anything um i actually was taught this method at central st martin's in a pattern innovative pattern cutting class that i did there and the guy patrick had us do all kinds of techniques in order to get more flair and pizzazz into the hem of the skirt and the shaping so there's so much you can do with it really simple idea but very um useful in terms of everything that you can do with it i will stop waffling now but if you did want to see other tutorials based upon that process let me know because i'm quite happily it's pattern making so i can easily create those and then i'll just show you the results rather than going through the entire sewing process ah uh, but that's it thank you so much for bearing with for, for the 12 days of christmas gift ideas uh thank you so much for all your support this year i really appreciate it i will be back before the end of the year with a what i made in 2022 video probably what i learned from this series video and possibly even a what i've got planned for 2023 video so still plenty more to come before the end of the year but thank you so much again for being here and yeah happy holidays bye so i've got this little tab which i will put a button in invisible zipper down the side it was a little bit looser um, than it did the other day, so maybe my tummy's gone down a bit. Um, good news is I have room for my Christmas dinner. I've got the slit. As you can see, it's a nice length. It's kind of like a pencil skirt, knee length. I think I'd probably prefer it shorter, more like here. But it's cute. Nice, simple knee length skirt that you could make for anyone. You just need the waist measurement, the hip measurement and the total length.